Hello everyone. Welcome to my channel Radiant Living. I am Dr. Pramod Joshi, MD Medicine, practicing since last 43 years. Do you know the importance of vitamin D is rapidly increasing over last one decade and now it has become an important part of the routine health checkup. In this video, you will get the knowledge about what is vitamin D, from what sources we get it, what are the medical conditions are associated with it and what three simple measures we can do to restore it. Our skin contains a natural hormone 7-dehydroxycholesterol. When sunlight falls on skin, the ultraviolet radiations convert this hormone to cholecalciferol vitamin D3 which is stored in liver. We can get vitamin D3 from the dietary sources. The plant source vitamin D is called as vitamin D2 or from vitamin D2 supplements or we can get from animal source which is called as vitamin D3. This vitamin is stored in liver and from liver it is transported as 5-hydroxy vitamin D3 to kidney and in kidney it is converted to the active metabolite 125-dihydroxy vitamin D which maintains the calcium and balance in the body. Natural sources of vitamin D3 are plant source and animal source. The plant source is called as vitamin D2 and in this slide we have given good number of examples of the plant source. You can go through it and the animal source is called as vitamin D3 and few of the examples have been mentioned here. Vitamin D deficiency in India is very common. Actually it is a paradox. Majority of the states and all population get sufficient sunlight all throughout India. Still, we find vitamin D deficiency in all age groups, both the sexes and all across the country. Almost 50 to 90 percent of the population in India is either has vitamin D insufficiency or deficiency. Most important reason in India for the vitamin D deficiency is change in lifestyle which is preventing us from exposure to sunlight and ultraviolet radiation. In India, we get ultraviolet radiation after 10.30 for about 2 to 3 hours. If we expose ourselves in half shirt and half pant for about 30-35 minutes after 10.30, we can generate that day's requirement of vitamin D. But that doesn't happen because at that time, most of us are either in the schools, colleges, offices or working somewhere indoors and those who are indoors are not willing to go out because it is hot sun or they get tan and those who are moving in sun they are either using umbrella or covering themselves full or using sunscreens and some few reasons are the, the ultraviolet radiation may not reach properly to you if there is more pollution or the cloudy day. The other factors which are responsible are the high fiber diet, the bariatric surgery, old age and some medical conditions which are mentioned in this. Vitamin D diagnosis is done by estimating the vitamin D levels in the blood. Ideal level is 30 to 90 nanograms per ml. The acceptable level is 20 to 30 nanograms per ml. Those who have between 10 to 20 nanograms are insufficient in vitamin D and those who have less than 10 nanograms per ml are deficient in vitamin D. Of course, those who have levels more than 100 are in the toxic range. In olden days, we knew very well that vitamin D deficiency gives rise to rickets, osteomalacia, osteopenia, osteoporosis or bone fractures but which is only the tip of the iceberg. As the research has advanced after 2004, scientists have found that vitamin D receptors are present in almost all tissues of the body. They are influencing almost 1000 genes and they are responsible for protein synthesis, cell differentiation, cell proliferation and cell growth. All this has opened up a new avenue and the research has shown that 
Vitamin D is associated with many more diseases which have been shown to the lower part of the iceberg which is submerged like kidney disease, diabetes, obesity, heart attacks, blood pressure, then osteoarthritis, psoriasis, multiple sclerosis and multiple cancers. We have learned that vitamin D is responsible for protein synthesis, cell growth, cell differentiation, cell proliferation. Vitamin D deficiency also increases the insulin resistance and it increases atherosclerosis giving rise to more diabetes, more hypertension, MI and stroke. This slide explains how vitamin D is associated with different types of diseases. This slide mentions the daily requirement of vitamin D in different age groups and then upper limits. The infants from 0 to 12 months need 400 to 1000 international units per day and 2000 units is the upper limit. The adults between age 1 to 18 years need about 600 to 1000 IU per day to the maximum of 4000 can be given per day. The age group of 19 to 15 years and 50 years and above and pregnancy and lactation in more than 19 years to 50 years, they all need around 1500 to 2000 international units per day and their upper limit is 10,000. And those who are having pregnancy less than 18 years, their requirement is 600 to 1000 units per day and the maximum is 4000. Three measures to restore vitamin D deficiency are first, exposure to sunlight, Two, dietary source and third is the supplements. Exposure to sunlight. We can expose ourselves to the sunlight when our shadow starts becoming smaller than our height. That usually happens in India after 10.30 am. We can get adequate amount of ultraviolet radiations if we expose ourselves in half shirt and half pant after 10.30 for about 30 minutes, 35 minutes we can generate that day's requirement of vitamin D. If it is not possible for daily exposure to sunlight, certainly we can avail vitamin D from dietary source. It can be either plant source or animal source. Those who are vegetarians, we have given a long list of foods which contains vitamin D in our previous slides. You can go through it and select as per your likings. And those who are non-veg eaters, they can make use of the animal foods and take adequate amount of vitamin D. They must take 1000 to 2000 international units per day for adequate supplements. And the third part is the supplement that is the medicines. This we will see in the next slide. We have seen association of vitamin D with various different diseases. If we are treating these diseases, to get the good response, we should maintain vitamin D levels between 30 to 90 nanograms. And if there is vitamin D deficiency, we should correct it. The correction is like initial loading phase and later a maintenance phase. A loading phase, we can give vitamin D 50,000 units per week for 8 weeks. But as you see, available strengths are about 60,000 units. It is because when we are consuming 60,000 units, some minor losses of absorption, if you include that, at least 50,000 units are definitely delivered to the body. So the available capsules, tablets, solutions and sachets are about 60,000 units. So we give 60,000 units per week for 8 weeks and later on there is a maintenance therapy. We can give 50,000 units every 2 weeks or as we have mentioned in the previous slide, we can take dietary consumptions of 1000 to 2000 D3 per day or expose ourselves to sunlight and generate your own vitamin D that will maintain you in the adequate levels of 30 to 90 nanograms. To sum up, vitamin D deficiency is very common in India and all over the world. The replacement is very easy, safe and cheap with the three simple measures that we have explained you just now. If you maintain vitamin D levels between 30 to 90 nanograms, it improves the results of treatment of various diseases we have mentioned. 
I hope you like this video. Do share it with your friends and near ones and subscribe to my channel by pressing the bell icon. See you in my next video.